Move away, Zoro killing Kaido theories, we have a new candidate for the role of Yonko defeater. She's cute, she's spunky, and she has quite the useful devil fruit ability. Will she be the hero of the alliance in bringing down Kaido? Hello, my Nakamatachi, this is Joy Girl with a discussion of the adorable, aspiring Kunoichi, Otama. Before we begin, a spoiler warning to all our anime only fans that this video will discuss some content that will still be unfamiliar to you. So please come back to this video at another time, I'm sure you'll realize the moment when this discussion seemed necessary, and in the meantime, please feel free to check out some of my other content. For everyone else, after the most recent chapter 995, the question of Tama's role in the war against Kaido rises again with more vigor as she has actually joined the battleground. I am aware that this is a discussion that has been around since the time we witnessed her Devil Fruit ability, but I personally didn't buy into it too much, especially considering she hadn't been present in all the recent action on Onigashima, until of course, in the most recent chapter. So I thought this was now an apt time to revive the question of how much Tama can realistically affect the war, and this video is a dive into that discussion. So let's just get right into it. Now, of course, the title of this video is a bit misleading and just a joke. Tama doesn't kill, or we haven't seen her do so yet, and that's likely to stay that way considering she's just an 8-year-old girl, and her Devil Fruit ability isn't actually very strong in terms of straight-up combat powers. But, she does have a very unique and useful ability in that she can produce dango from her cheeks, and this piece of mochi, if consumed by animals or beasts, can cause said creature to become a servant of Tama's and follow her every command. And that has huge implications for this arc considering that Kaido himself can turn into a dragon and that he leads a pirate crew comprised of beasts. I mean, he is Kaido of a hundred beasts after all. But before we get carried away, let's unpack her Devil Fruit ability because there are points of uncertainty that makes this discussion less straightforward. Tama's yet to be named Paramecia Devil Fruit ability allows us to create Dango from her cheeks and this is something that cannot be forcefully created or taken away from her. Whilst the Dango pieces do not have any nutritional value and cannot be consumed by hungry humans such as Tama who are searching for food, it does come in handy in taming animals and creatures who become subservient to Tama and serve the young aspiring Kunoichi as their master, following her as well as protecting Tama. We also saw that Tama's ability works on Smile Zoe and Fruit users, much to even Tama's surprise as when Beast Pirate's headliner Speed became a loyal follower of Tama after eating the dumpling, coming even close to death trying to protect her new master. The justification that is presented in the manga for the Dango working on Smile Zoe and users as opposed to the nil effect it has on humans is that these Devil Fruit holding individuals are actually part animal. The significance of this is that it has yet to be confirmed as to whether Tama's ability would work on normal Zoan fruit users. To clarify, natural Zoan fruits allow an individual to transform into an animal form or a human animal hybrid form. However, smile Zoan fruits usually involves the individuals having either part or the whole conscious animal growing out of their own body limbs or features, such as Holdem who has a lion growing out of his stomach. Some people seem to have taken the difference between the natural and artificial devil fruits to mean that the latter means one becomes part animal, especially considering that some individuals don't even have control over their animal features, which are permanent extensions of their bodies, whereas natural zoan fruits still means the conscious human individual remains. An argument can be made that not all smile zoan fruit users result in a conscious animal spawning out of one's body, and that the user can simply transform part of their body into animal limbs, and also that natural Zoan users, even with their will and consciousness intact, are still transforming into an animal. And in that light, there's no reason why Tama's Dango shouldn't be able to work on Smile and Zoan fruit users alike. But in saying that, I am prepared to accept the possibility that Tama's powers are indeed limited to real animals and Smile Zoan users only. For one, that is what the manga seems to imply by explaining that the Dango worked on Miss Speed as she is part horse. But more convincingly, Tama's power would be way too overpowered if she could use it on all Zoan fruit users. Which isn't to say that her ability to master Smile Zoans isn't still way too convenient, but at least there would be a limit to this madness if we cap it to Smile Zoan Devil Fruits. So, if we are to assume that this limiter exists, 
What this obviously means is that this rules out Tama's ability to affect some of the major beast pirates like the Calamities and Toby Roppo, who all have natural rather than artificial Zoan fruits. However, this doesn't have to mean that Tama's role in the arc isn't important. In fact, there's quite a bit to suggest that Tama will play a significant role within the Wano arc. Tama was the first Wano inhabitant that Luffy met. She has quite a developed backstory, even including a connection to Ace, a character significant to our protagonist. Also, it seems that there may still be more coming to her backstory considering her family situation remains much of a mystery and she has a strong relationship with Hitetsu, another figure who seems to be important considering his impressive ancestry and his own abilities as a swordsmith. But even if we don't end up finding out more about Tama's backstory, the fact that she has now actually joined the war, appearing at Onimgashima despite only being 8 years old seems to suggest that she has a big role to play in the struggle against Kaido. In addition, Tama seemingly has connections to Momotaro, the legendary Japanese hero who Momonosuke also seems to be largely based on. Momotaro is known to have met and befriended three animals on his journey to defeat some Oni. The animals who agreed to help him in his quest in exchange for some kibidango. These three animals consisted of a dog, a monkey and a pheasant. And these parallels to Tama are quite evident in that she gains control over animals by using her ability, an attack named kibidango, which allows her to create the melee dumplings which are fed to the animals. Also, right at the beginning of Wano, we were introduced to Komachio, a Koma Inu which resembles a dog with lion and pig-like features who already seem to be Tama's pet seemingly even without being fed one of her dangos. And also Hihimaru, a baboon who was formerly the beast pirate's guard before being turned into one of Tama's loyal servants after consuming a dango. This just leaves a pheasant in order to make a more obvious connection to Momotaro's story, but there is still a large possibility that Tama will come to meet a pheasant later in the arc possibly another one of Kaido's crew. So it seems that the legend of Momotaro is split between Momonosuke and Tama. I mean both of them are 8 years old and the two seem to have a connection in that they travelled and trained together whilst en route to free Luffy from Udon. Maybe Momonosuke was even aware of Tama being present at Onigashima seeing as he did submit to her insistence in joining the action at the prison mines before. In any case, there's a lot there to point to the possibility of Tama playing a large role in the war against Kaido. And there are a few ways I can think of on how she may impact the war. Firstly, Tama will be able to use her ability against Kaido himself. Because it is not confirmed the nature of Kaido's existence, it is very well possible that Kaido at his core is a dragon and has eaten a human devil fruit. I mean he is referred as the strongest creature after all, and whenever he fights, he seems to prefer transforming into his human form to land the stronger blows, suggesting that his human form may not be his base form. If that is the case, then Kaido may very well be susceptible to Tama's ability even if it doesn't work against natural Zoans. However, an argument could be made against this proposition, and quite a compelling one at that. In terms of story development, it's not a very strong or interesting conclusion to the battle, it would be way too convenient and considering the structure of One Piece, it seems unlikely that Luffy will not be the individual to defeat the Yonko. Personally, I wouldn't enjoy it as much if Tama did end up becoming the defeater of the almighty Kaido. Though it would be pretty ironic and funny if the strongest creature in the world became a servant to a sweet, cute little girl. Moving on to the next possibility, Tama of 100 Beasts. Even if Tama can't rule over the natural Zoans or Kaido himself, she is still able to tame all the smile using gifters, provided that she is able to feed them all the dangos of course. And because this is still a tall task and Tama is still a young girl, one way I can see this happening is if she teamed up in a tag team with Usopp. Usopp always makes a significant contribution in every arc, and seeing as he alone was not strong enough in terms of pure combat to go literally head to head against the Tobi Roppo, his role in the arc could be to aid Tama in subduing all the beast pirates. The two could go around with Tama producing the Kibidango and Usopp using his sniper skills to shoot them into the beast pirates mouths. And putting on our tinfoil hat, 
there is also the possibility of Thomas awakened Devil Fruit. Albeit, this is a lot less likely and a wilder speculation considering her young age. I mean, I wouldn't actually expect her to have awakened her abilities yet, but on the off chance she has, how would you see her awakened Devil Fruit coming into play? I could see it as Tama being able to mass produce the Dungo so that they can drop the mochi pieces like a rain shower all at once. But because this still requires the gifters to actually eat it, I could also see her awakened Devil Fruit powers being her ability to affect natural Zoan Fruit users. And if this was to happen, on the off chance that Tama could actually come to rule all of Kaido's Zoan users, it can actually go hand in hand with another discussion we have had about the defeat of Kaido. In that video, I theorized that by the end of the war, Kaido's downfall would come about with the help of his own crew who have turned on him. Whilst I said in that video that these individuals would undergo a change in perspective after witnessing Luffy's determination, but what if it is actually the result of coming under Tama's control? This would still work with the idea that Kaido's demise may be brought about by the very same pirate crew that he himself amassed. But even without these truly wild, crazy speculations and going back to our Tama speculation, even without awakened abilities, Tama could make a big difference in the war. Seeing as the Gifters make up almost 500 of Kaido's army, that is a large impact that Tama would be having if all of them became her followers, and thus part of the alliance. It would significantly even out the playing field where the difference in numbers have been a big obstacle for the alliance. And now moving on to another connection that Tama has in the arc is her relationship with Big Mom. Now, this one doesn't really have to do with her Devil Fruit abilities, but I still do think it is worth mentioning. During Big Mom's time as Olin while she suffered from amnesia, she had grown very fond of Tama, even willing to share Oshuriko with the young girl. And whilst Big Mom has now returned to a normal state and had no sympathy towards Choppa who was a Straw Hat member, I have long expected that Big Mom's amnesia will return at some point in this arc. And if this was to happen, I see that she will resume her alliance with Tama, and this will be a great turning point in the war that shifts the balance against Kaido. As much as I don't love the idea of Big Mom's amnesia plotline coming back, I just don't see this storyline being introduced early in the arc having any purpose unless it comes back into play at a later time, and similarly, I don't think the meeting and relationship between the two characters would have happened if there wasn't going to be some payoff later. But that brings us to the end of this discussion on how Tama could realistically affect the war. Please let me know what you think of this idea and any further thoughts you had about the young aspiring Kunoichi joining in on the action by leaving a comment below. Please like, share or subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.